What's going on, Chatbot Builders? Ryan here, and today I've got a good one for you, and one that I think is just much needed. We're gonna learn how to properly prepare a chatbot prompt for an AI chatbot. Let's get right into it. So we know that AI chatbots are the talk of tech right now. Everyone is trying to get into AI, and for good reason, it is the future. We've got AAA, AAA automation agencies popping up. Um, shout out to Liam there. We've got a lot of great things happening right now in the space. Things have just been totally shaken up by large language models like GPT-3 and GPT-4. Today, we're gonna to focus on the five Ps of prompt engineering to ensure you get a perfect prompt for your chatbot. Number one, the first of the five Ps is going to be purpose. Every chatbot should have an overall purpose, whether it's customer support or whether it's making reservations, whatever that may be, it's best practice to go ahead and define the purpose of your chatbot. You can be as detailed or as minimal as you like. Overload is not good, but sometimes a lack of detail will result in a uncontrolled bot, and that's something that we don't want. The second of the five Ps is going to be profile. This is the section you're gonna to wanna to place all of your business information into that you can. This will help your AI chatbot answer the most common questions. So in your business profile, you need to include obviously your business name, the address, phone number, emails, if that's something that you want to provide to customers who may call in or um, send a message in to request an email, hours of operation, key contacts, important policies. These are all things that you can just include right in your business information or system prompt with chatbotbuilder.ai. Number three, people. It's all about the people that your chatbot is going to serve. Understanding your audience is key. And just because you know your audience doesn't mean your chatbot understands who your audience is just yet. But with just a bit of information, this is an easy fix. Your chatbot does need to understand. Are you talking to someone who is in high school, college age? Or is it an older adult? These are things that are gonna be important. These words that you are providing OpenAI is going to help your results return better outputs. Another good thing to think about including is gonna be a feedback loop. We just actually started including this ourselves. When the chatbot returns an answer, to the user that is a default reply answer powered by AI, we leave them with quick reply options. These are little buttons that when you click them, they disappear. They pull you along to the next step of the conversational journey. Imagine this scenario, you've got a thumbs up, a thumbs down, and an in chat button. This is a very common setup. The feedback loop is very important. Persistency is number four, and this is a big one, so pay attention to this slide, guys. If you've ever experienced ChatGPT not doing what it's supposed to do, it's probably because your prompt is not persistent enough. What do I mean by this? Here we can see undesired conversations. Again, we're gonna include these in our business information or our system prompt section. We'll just include all of the examples here. Undesired, user, who is the president, assistant, Sorry, I'm trained on XYZ business data only. Obviously, you would change XYZ data to your company name. This will ensure that you're setting up your chatbot for success. If you don't want your chatbot to answer questions like, what's the distance between the earth and the moon? You need to give it some examples to go off of. In this case, it says, sorry, my expertise is only in XYZ business or product or service. I can help you with that. And this simple instruction and in repetitive format helps your chatbot understand what you want it to do and what you don't want it to do. We'll also include some desired conversations. This is again going to help fine tune the output of your chatbot's responses based on the prompt. So what this means is you're gonna get a more accurate, more desirable response when you actually show and tell your chatbot prompt what to do. Lastly, we've got perfection. The AI summary that is included in all of your accounts is awesome. When a conversation is completed, 
you can send yourself or your client this AI summary, which can include a recap of the conversation, recommended next steps, and recommendations for optimization for future conversations. All done by AI. We like to see this done on the phone channel. So the customer calls, interacts with the AI, maybe gets transferred over to a human. Meanwhile, we're recording that conversation. When the conversation is ended, we'll send a flow automatically to transcribe that audio and then run the AI summary. This allows us to have a great grasp on the pulse of the business's communication and understand how to optimize directly from the unbiased AI. Another note, you can have all the information in the world, but if you don't react, what good is it? So we just introduced a brand new feature for push notifications. This is going to be awesome. Now, whenever your chatbot needs to notify you, rather than sending a text message or relying on a social media channel or an email, you can get a push notification. All right, so to close this thing on out, I've got a gift for you. We're gonna click on in this button here. So what we've got here is a free Google Sheet for you to use based on the five Ps that when you answer these questions, you're gonna have an amazing chatbot. Um, and I'm gonna show you a really quick down and dirty on how we can look at this. I'm just gonna copy all of these questions. I've got ChatGPT opened here, and I'm gonna say, fill in this template with sample data from Ryan's restaurant. Boom, so we're getting all this good information here. And what I'll do is grab all the info that we just got here, copy that to my clipboard. Let's open up a brand new account and put this theory to the test. We're gonna just click create new account. Web chat is all we need. And we'll say prompt test. And this is where it's so awesome, guys. All we need to do is hit settings here. Let's go to our integrations, chat GPT, edit. And we're gonna just replace this filler text. Boom. All right, so we've only used 3,000 out of our 15,000 characters, but hey, big news. Earlier this week, we just released access to GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K, so that 15,000 tokens is jumping up to 60,000. And you can use as many of these prompt boxes, per se, these prompt blocks right in the flow builder. So you're not just limited to 60,000 characters, you can have as many of these prompt boxes in your flows as you'd like. But here we're good to go, let's hit continue. And now we can go ahead and click test. So let's go to click channels and let's choose web chat. We'll click manage. Let's give it a welcome message. We've got one built in for you. Let's hide the header, sure. And let's choose the template number one, it's my favorite. Copy, we've got the URL on our clipboard and now we paste and we should be able to see our chatbot in action. And I'm gonna say, um, Give me your address, please. And we should get the address that we gave it, which is a sample address. Bam. Our business address, XYZ Company. Guys, I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below, do you have questions about prompt engineering? Do you want to learn more about prompt chaining? I want to hear your thoughts. And if you're building bots, consider using chatbotbuilder.ai. We'd love to have you. Thanks for watching.